Hi everyone and welcome once again to my lecture series in Integral Calculus. In this episode, I will teach you another technique of integration which is about trigonometric integrals. These are integrals involving trigonometric functions raised to certain powers. So kagaya ng mga ito, these are some of the examples that I will solve in this video. Or possibly the integrand may involve product of sines and cosines. However, this topic, as you will see later, requires more algebra and trigonometry than it requires calculus. The calculus part only comes in the end when we are about to integrate. Thus, it's important to recall some fundamental trigonometric identities and properties in algebra. But don't worry because they will be mentioned in the discussion. So, if you're ready, let's begin. First, let us solve integrals of the form sine raised to mx cosine nx. So, these are integrands involving sines and cosines that are raised to certain power. So, paano tayo mag integrate ng sine at cosine na nakamultiply and at the same time raised to certain power? Madali lang yan kasi may rules. Okay? So, ang titingnan mo lang dyan is which of these two has an add power for add powers of sine so that means itong m i add kung alin yung may add yun ang magiging du so that means if this m is add then sine x would be du and therefore yung u mo yung matitira yung cosine x pero hindi kasama yung n cosine x lang okay kaya ang gagawin mo is a save mo na agad yung isang sine factor para sa du at yung natitirang sign, e-express mo naman in terms of cosine. Using what? Using a trigonometric identity, yung matitira dito remember na sine squared, i-express mo in terms of cosine using this identity. Sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. Okay? Now, in case naman na add ang power ng cosine, yan, ito naman yung add, yung n ang add. So, Ititira mo na agad yung isang cosine x para yun ang maging du, cosine x dx. Tapos may matitira dyan na cosine something. Kung yan ay add, edi magiging even na siya kasi binawasan mo ng isa. Yung cosine na yon na raised to even, i-convert mo naman into sine using this identity. Cosine squared x is equal to 1 minus sine squared x. At yung sine dito, yan ang magiging u. Okay, so again, ang rule is kung alin yung may add na exponent, yon ang magiging du. Madali lang yan, promise. Now, what if parehas even yung ating exponents? Diba? Walang add. Anong gagawin mo? Ayan. Kapag ka parehas even ang exponent ng sine at saka cosine, gagamit tayo ng panibagong identity. Ito yun. I think uh, you're already familiar with this kasi na-discuss na natin ito in our previous topics doon sa module 1. That sine squared x is equal to 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2x. Kapag ka naman cosine squared, itong minus magiging plus lang. So, you need to remember these identities kasi gagamitin natin yan. Another identity na ginagamit is itong sine 2x. Sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cosine x. Okay? So, ayan ha. Yung review ng trigonometry, nabanggit ko na. Kasi yung mga yan, gagamitin natin sa mga susunod pang mga examples. Okay? So, let us solve the first example. Sine raised to 4x times cosine raised to 7 X. So, anong rule kanina? Sabi ko sa inyo, kung alin yung may add na power, yun ang magiging du. So, since dito ang may add na power ay cosine, that means, ihiwalay na agad natin siya. Right? Para maging cosine to the 6. Okay, so dito magkakaroon tayo ng sine raised to 4x multiplied by cosine raised to 6x. Tapos yung ibubukod mo dito na ano? Cosine x dx. Remember, ito yung magiging du mo. Tapos yung matitira mo dito ang cosine, gagawin mong in terms of sine. Paano? Gamitan mo ng identity. Kopyahin ko lang ha. Yung sine raised to 4x. Tapos ito, yung cosine to the 6, diba? That is the same as cosine squared cube. Remember that this cosine to the 6x is the same as cosine squared x cube. 
'di ba? Kaya ang gawin natin, itong cosine squared na 'to, 'yan ay 1 minus sine squared x. Tapos iko-cube mo pa. And then cosine x dx. So ngayon, pwede na tayong mag-u substitution. Ano? Ano ang gagamitin natin na u? Yung d, you remember, yung may add power. So yung u natin is yung sine sin x tapos ang du of course is cosine of x dx ay shit tapos may express na natin ngayon yan in terms of u una ito ay magiging u to the fourth multiplied by ay magiging 1 minus u squared pero yung 1 minus u squared na yan naka pa don't forget tapos yung natitira mong cosine x dx yan ang iyong du o di ba from a very long expression here we are now able to reduce our uh, problem into a simpler expression in terms of u pero para ma-integrate natin yan kinakailangan expand ko muna ito tapos i-multiply ko sa u raised to 4. So, uh, para magawa natin 'yan, dapat marunong kang magano, cube ng isang binomial. So, paano ba mag-cube ng isang binomial? I recall natin yung properties sa algebra. So, a minus b cube. So, to expand this first, a cube tapos minus 3 times a and then squared b. And then plus 3 ulit. This time, yung a, isa na lang ang exponent niya, and then yung b naman yung i-square mo. Tapos, minus b cube. Okay, so that's how you cube the difference of these two. I-apply natin yan dito. So, kopyahin ko lang ulit yung u to the fourth. Tapos, ito ay ating expand. The cube of 1 is 1, tapos minus. 3 times 1 squared is 3. Tapos, multiplied by u squared. So, 3 times u squared. Tapos, plus 3 uli. 3 times 1 is 3. Tapos, u squared, i-square ko, u to the fourth. Plus 3, u raised to 4. Tapos, minus cube nito. So, u squared cube is u raised to 6 du. So, now we can distribute u to the fourth and multiply it to all these terms inside the parentheses. So, we'll get u to the fourth minus 3u raised to 6 plus 3u raised to 8 minus u to the fourth times u to the sixth is u raised to 10 du. Ayan. So, dito na ngayon papasok ang calculus. <laughs> Simple lang pala kasi isang integration formula lang yung gagamitin natin, the integration of the power function, di ba? So, to integrating, we will get u to the 5 over 5 minus 3 over 7 u raised to 7 plus this becomes 3 over 9 u raised to 9 minus u raised to 11 over 11, of course, plus c. Now, this is not yet our final answer because the original variable is in terms of x. Ano ba yung ginawa nating u? Ang ginawa nating u ay sine x. So, magiging ano siya? 1 fifth times sine x raised to fifth minus 3 over 7 sine x raised to 7 Plus, 3 over 9 is 1 third. So, 1 third times sine x raised to 9 minus 1 over 11 sine x raised to 11 plus there you go. Ganun lang po kadali. Di ba? So, kung napansin nyo, mas marami pa yung algebra dito kumpara sa calculus. Kasi ang calculus, ginamit lang natin nung time na tayo ay nag-integrate. Diba? Madali lang. At dahil madali lang, another example. Okay, so let us solve the second example. Sine to the fifth of x times cosine squared x dx. So once again, anong rule? Okay, ang rule is kung ano yung add power, siya yung magiging du. At yung matitira, yun ang magiging u. O, di ba? So, since dito ang add na power ay nasa sign, ihihwalay muna natin yung isang sign. So, magiging sign to the fourth x yan. Times cosine squared x. Tapos, multiply natin yung isang inihiwalay na sine x dx. At ito yung magiging du. 
di ba? So dito yung mag, yung u dapat is cosine. So dapat itong sine i-express natin in terms of cosine. Paano? Di ba yung sine to the fourth x that's the same as sine squared x na naka-square. <laughs> di ba? Tapos gamit ulit yung Pythagorean identity sa triangle, pwede nating i-express itong sign as in terms of cosine. So 1 minus cosine squared x tapos i-square ko pa siya. Times cosine squared x times sine x dx. Yan. Okay. So, pwede na tayong mag-use substitution ngayon. ba? So, dito, ang gagawin nating u is cosine x. Tapos, ang du ay magiging negative of sine x dx. Yan. Dapat, itong expression na to, ma-express na natin in terms of u. At dahil itong sine x dx dito ay positive At ito naman yung du natin ay negative Magiging negative yung expression natin So 1 minus ito magiging u squared Tapos i-square mo pa Kasi sabi niya naka-square ayun no Times u squared times du so now, anong pwedeng gawin natin dito? Pwede ko muna siyang expand Kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina. expand natin to Magiging 1 minus 2 u squared plus u raised to 4. Tapos, multiply natin siya sa u squared. Okay? Dito ko na isulat sa taas yung sunod. Negative of the integral of. Pag minultiply natin ito, dun sa u squared, magiging u squared minus 2u raised to 4 plus u raised to 6 du. O ba Ang dali-dali lang. <laughs> Ang sunod natin gagawin dyan is mag-integrate. Ang dali-dali lang i-integrate nyan. Negative of mm -hmm. ito magiging u cube over 3. Diba? Tapos ito magiging minus 2 fifths u raised to 5 plus u raised to 7 over 7 and then plus c. Okay? Distribute natin yung negative sign tapos ibalik natin ito in terms of x. Yung ginawa natin yung is cosine. So, makakaroon ako dyan ng negative 1 third times cosine x cube minus 2 fifths times cosine x raised to 5 plus 1. Okay. Sorry. Minus, minus. This should be plus and negative, positive. This should be minus. Minus 1 over 7 times cosine of x raised to 7 and then plus e. There you go. Sobrang dali lang. Ang dali lang, diba? Okay. So, ganyan lang po kadali. Dahil dyan, another example. Example number 3. For example number 3, ang isosold natin kung napansin nyo, ay walang add power, parehas siyang even. ba? Ano nga yung sinabi natin kanina kapag ka ang ini-integrate natin, ang power ay parehas even, meron tayong ginagamit na identity. Ano yung ginagamit na identity? Cosine squared x is equal to 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2x. Tapos yung sine squared naman, actually, kopyahin mo lang yan, paltan mo lang yung plus, gawin mo minus. So, magiging 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2x. Okay, so, yan yung gagamitin nating identity para tayo makapag-integrate. Palitan natin yung cosine squared, gawin natin 1 half plus 1 half cos 2x times sine to the fourth. Sine to the fourth is sine squared. Na ini square, de ba? So one half minus one half cosine 2x e square pa natin. Kasi nga yung sine squared e square para maging sine to the fourth. And then copy dx. Anong sunod na gagawin? Ang sunod nating gawin is expand natin yung pangalawang uh, yung term sa loob ng pangalawang parenthesis. Copy-paste ko muna tong 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2x. Then, expand natin to magiging 1 fourth minus 
One half times one half is one fourth times two negative one half. You know, negative. So one half sa and then cosine two x tapos plus square ni to one fourth cosine squared two x and then dx. Ayan na siya. Tapos ngayon, pwede na tayong mag-multiply. Okay? Multiply natin yan. Multiply natin yan. Okay? So, ito muna, 1 half times all of these terms. So, magiging 1 eighth minus 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth cosine of 2x tapos 1 half plus uh, times 1 fourth is uh, 1 eighth cosine squared 2x. Ito naman. Multiply natin tong term na to dito sa tatlong terms dito. Now we have 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. So 1 eighth times cosine 2x. Tapos 1 half times negative 1 half is minus 1 fourth. Cosine squared 2x. Tapos 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. So, plus 1 eight, cosine 2x, tapos ito cosine squared 2x. So, magiging cosine cube 2x dx. Ayan na siya. <laughs> Baka pwede tayong mag-simplify dito. Combine natin yung mga terms na magkakamukha. Yung 1 eight, walang kamukha. Ito, cosine 2x. Ay! Okay. So, negative 1 fourth plus 1 eight is negative 1 eight. Negative 1 eight, cosine 2x. Next, ito. 1 8 minus 1 fourth is still negative 1 8. So, 1 8 cosine squared 2x. Tapos, ay, may matitira ditong 1 8 cosine cube 2x. So, plus 1 8 cosine cube 2x times dx. Ayan. So, kung napansin nyo, lahat ng terms natin ay may common factor. Ang common factor ay 1 8. Okay, so ilabas ko lang yan ha Sa kabila ng slide 1, 8 times Anong matitira? 1 minus cosine 2x 1 minus cosine 2x Tapos minus cosine squared 2x Ano pa? Plus cosine cube 2x Plus cosine cube 2x dx. Ngayon, pwede na ba tayo mag-integrate dyan? Mm -hmm. Itong unang dalawang terms, readily integrable na yan. Pero itong pangatlo at pangapat na terms ay hindi pa. Okay? Kaya ang gagawin ko, rewrite ko muna yan. 1, 8 times, hiwalay ko na itong pwedeng i-integrate ha. 1 minus cosine 2x. Bakit? Kasi naghihintay na lang sila. Kung mag sila sa finals. <laughs> Para naman sa third term, hihiwalay natin siya. So, kukopyahin ko lang ulit yung minus 1, 8. Okay, times sa integral of. Itong cosine squared 2x, gagawin natin, uh, gagamitin ulit natin yung identity kanina ng cosine squared. Okay, di ba kanina yung cosine squared x is 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2x. Pero ito kasi 2x na, kaya dapat magiging ano siya, 1 half plus 1 half cosine 4 x. Bakit po naging 4x? Kasi yung original niyan, x lang. Pag x, ito nagiging 2x. So, kung ito 2x, dapat ito maging 4x. Okay? Times dx. And for the last term, kopyahin ulit natin yung 1 8 times the integral of ano kayang pwedeng gawin sa cosine cube? Paghiwalayin natin yan. Gawin natin cosine squared 2x tapos times cosine 2x and then dx. So, Ito, readily integrable na. Anong gagawin natin dito? So, ito bang cosine squared? Gagawin ko rin 1 half plus... Co no, hindi na. Gamitin mo dyan yung Pythagorean identity. Parang yung ginagawa natin kanina. No? So, magiging 1 8 times the integral of... So, dito, ang may add exponent is yung cosine. Diba? Kaya itong natitirang cosine, gagawin mong in terms of sine. Using the Pythagorean identity, 1 minus sine squared 2x times... Kopyahin ko na siya. Cosine 2x dx. Okay. Tapos dito tayo mag use substitution. Pag nag use substitution ka dyan, magiging ano siya? Magiging u is equal to sine 2x. Tapos yung du is equal to 2 cosine x dx. Yan. So itong cosine x dx dito ay magiging du over 2. Kaya ito, 
yung d over 2 na yun, magiging multiplier pa siya ng 1, 8. So, magiging 1 over 16 times the integral of 1 minus u squared multiplied by d. Ayan na siya ngayon. Okay? So, now, let's integrate. Pag in-integrate natin to, kopyahin ko na lang ha, 1, 8 times... So, may x, tapos, integral ng cosine is positive sign, minus 1 half times sine 2x, tapos, minus 1 eight ulit. Tapos dito, 1 half x, plus, integral ng cosine again is positive sign. So, 1 half, tapos may multiplier pa na 4. So, magiging 1 eight. 1 eight times sine of 4x. Ayan. Minus. Ito na. Pag in-integrate natin to magiging 1 over 16 times u. Kung saan ang u ay equal sa sine 2x. ba? Sine 2x minus u cube over 3. So, 1 third times u cube. Kung saan ang u ay sine 2x. So, sine cube of 2x and then Plus Pag sinimplify natin yan, ano ang mangyayari? Ito ay magiging 1,8x minus 1 over 16 sin 2x minus 1 over 16x tapos magiging ano to minus 1 over 64 sin 4x minus 1 over 16 Sine 2x minus 6 times this 48. Plus na pala siya kasi minus minus. 1 over 48 sine cube 2x and then plus C. Check natin baka may mga similar terms na pwede natin i-combine. May magka-cancel ba dyan? Yes! Ito ako napansin nyo. May magka-cancel dyan. Alen! Ah, I'm sorry. Ito pala ay plus. Nakakaloka. So, dapat ito plus. Ayun, plus. Plus. So, dapat ito, plus din siya. At dapat ito, minus. I'm sorry po. Ito plus. Okay. So, dito ang magka-cancel is ito. Yung negative 1 over 16 sin 2x. At saka ito. 1 over 16 sin 2x. Now, sulat na natin yung final answer natin. Ano yung natira? 1, 8 minus 1 over 16 is 1 over 16. 1 over 16x. Tapos, ito. 1 over 64 minus 1 over 64 times sin 4x. And then, minus 1 over 48 multiplied by sin cube of 2x. And then, plus C. So, there you go. This is now our final answer. Okay, kung napansin nyo kanina, yung ating given problem, maiksi lang. And then, humaba ng humaba. And then, after yung humaba, napaiksi natin. Paiksi ng paiksi hanggang maging ganito na lang siya. So, ganyan ang trend. Usually, sa mga solution ng problems. Hahaba, and then, iiksi. Kapag ang solution mo, pahaba ng pahaba, na walang katapusan, most likely, yan ay mali. There is something wrong with your solution. Kasi dapat, kung yan ay solvable at nasosolve yung problem, dapat yan ay magko-converge. E sa exam naman, yung mga binibigay na problems, nasosolve. Kaya dapat, ang solution ay mag-converge at umiksi ng umiksi hanggang may makuha kang final answer. Okay? So, that's a tip kapag ka ikaw ay nag-e-exam. This time, mag-solve naman tayo ng powers ng tangent at saka second. Paano mag-integrate ng mga functions kung saan ang tangent at saka second ay nakaray sa power? May rule din dito. Kapag even ang powers ng second x, dapat yung u ay yung tangent. Again ha, kapag ang power ng second ay even, ang ginagawang u ay tangent. Tapos of course, yung second dito na isa, isang second squared, ipa-factor out muna para maging du. Okay, kasi nga ang derivative ng tangent ay second squared. So, kung ano man dito yung matitirang second, gagawin mo siyang in terms of tangent using this identity. That second squared is equal to 1 plus tangent squared. Now, how about for add powers of tangent? 
kung add ang power ng tangent, yung kabila naman ang magiging u. Let u be equal to second x. Tapos dito, maglalabas ka ng isang tan x at saka sec x. Bakit? Kasi po, ang derivative ng second ay second x times tangent x. ba? Diba? So, mag separate ka na ng second x tangent x para yun ang maging du mo. Tapos, yung matitirang tangent, gagawin mong in terms of second using the identity that tangent squared is equal to second squared x minus 1. Dito lang din yung galing, oh. Kinuha mo lang dito yung tangent. Second squared minus 1. Okay? So, tandaan po natin, yan yung rules. Hindi ka dapat maligaw kasi may definite na rule, no? Susundin mo lang yung rule. Kagaya nito, tangent to the 6x, second to the 4x. Here, we have an integral containing an even power of second x. ba? Diba? Even power of second x. Paano natin i-integrate yan? Ang gagawin mo is, mm -hmm, ihiwalay mo na agad yung second square dito. Tapos ang magiging u dyan ay tangent. Okay, so gawin natin yan. Integral of tangent to the 6x times, ihiwalay mo yung second squared x at ihiwalay mo yung natira. Ito yung second x dx. Second squared x dx. Nagagawin mong du. Tapos itong second squared x, gawin mong in terms of tangent. ba? Diba? Saan ba equal? Yung second squared. Second squared is equal to 1 plus tangent squared x. Now, pwede na tayong mag-u substitution. Ano ang gagawin natin na u? We let u be equal to, again, kapag ka even power ang second, ang u ay tangent. Tapos, ang du ay second squared x dx. So, kapag nag-u substitution tayo, ito magiging u raised to 6 times 1 plus u squared times du. Itong buong to, du na lang siya. O, diba? Dali-dali lang. <laughs> Tapos, uh, i-distribute lang natin yan. Magiging u raised to 6 plus uh, u raised to 8 times du. Tapos, after that, pwede tayo mag-integrate. Magiging u raised to 7 over 7 plus u raised to 9 over 9 plus c. Kung saan ang u ay equal sa tangent x. So, I have 1 over 7 Tangent x raised to 7 plus 1 over 9. Tangent x raised to 9 and then plus c. That's it. Sobrang dali lang. Caring, caring nyo yan. Example number 5. Let's integrate tangent to the 50, second to the 70 dt. Okay, so dito napansin natin na ang tangent ay may add exponent. So dito ang i-apply natin is yung add powers of tangent Kung saan, ang gagawin nating u ay second of t. Tapos, dahil ang second, ang ginawa nating u, yung du second tangent. So, maghiwalay na tayo ngayon. Ano? Ihiwalay natin yung isang second at saka isang tangent. Kaya ito magiging tangent to the fourth t na lang. At ito magiging second to the sixth t na lang. And then, ito yung inihiwalay mo. Tangent t times second of t dt. So, ngayon, pwede na tayong mag u substitution. Ano ang gagawin natin na u? Dahil add ang powers ng tangent, we let u be equal to second of t. Kung saan ang du ay equal sa second t times tangent of t dt. Ito yun, di ba? Second times tangent. Tapos, itong tangent na ito, gagawin natin in terms of second. Paano? Okay. So, remember that this is tangent to the fourth. Na pwede natin gawing, di ba, yung tangent to the fourth, t ay equal sa tangent squared, t squared. Tapos, yung tangent na yan ay equal sa second squared, t minus 1. Di ba? So, gawin natin yan. No? So, second squared, t minus 1. Tapos, naka-square pa siya. Bakit? Kasi ito ay tangent squared. Pag in-square, tangent to the fourth. And then, second to the sixth t. And then, tangent t, second t dt. Mag-use substitution na tayo ngayon, di ba? Pwede na yan. Ito magiging 
u squared minus 1 squared multiplied by second u raised to 6 multiplied by du. Okay, so this becomes u squared minus 1 and then squared times u to the 6th. Expand natin. Pag in-expand natin yan, magiging u to the 4th times u to the 6th is u raised to 10. Tapos ito ay magiging 2u squared times u to the 6th. So 2u to the 8th tapos uh, plus 1 times u to the 6th is u raised to 6 du. Ayan. Pwede na tayo ngayon mag-integrate. Diba? Ang dali-dali. Pag in-integrate natin yan, ano ang magiging sagot? Simple lang, u raised to 11 over 11 minus 2 over 9 u raised to 9 plus u raised to 7 over 7 plus c. I-convert natin, pabalik sa variable na x. Ang u ay ginawa nating second t. So, second, this is 1 over 11, second t, raised to 11, minus 2 over 9, second of t, raised to 9, plus 1 over 7, second of t, raised to 7, plus e. That's it. Ganyan lang po kadali. Sobrang simple lang. Now, mag-integrate naman tayo ng mga functions involving the product of sines and cosines. Halimbawa, we are integrating sine mx, cosine nx. Kanina kasi yung m at saka n, they are exponents of sine and cosine. But now, we don't have exponents anymore. Rather, this m and n are multipliers of x. So, paano kapag kaganyan ang ating integrate Product ng sine at saka cosine. Or, possibly, product ng dalawang signs or possibly product ng dalawang cosines. So, to integrate these functions, we need to apply some trigonometric identities. Sir, anong trigonometric identity ang ating gagamitin? Para sa unang integral, ang i-apply nating identity is yung identity involving the product of sine and cosine. Ano yon? So, we have sine ax times cosine bx. So, this product is equal to 1 half times sine of a plus b x plus sine ulit. Then, this time difference naman a minus b times x. Okay? So, yan ang gagamitin nating identity para masolve ang integral na ito. Okay? Para naman sa pangalawang integral, ang gagamitin nating identity yung product ng dalawang signs. Limbawa, sine ax times sine bx. So, san equal ang identity na ito? Halos kamukha lang siya nito. Halos. Meron ding one half na multiplier. Pero, instead of sine, cosine yung gagamitin natin. Cosine of, unahin natin yung a minus b. a minus b, tapos minus cosine ulit. And then, a plus b naman. Okay, lagyan natin dito ng x at saka x. Ayan. So, for the third integral, we will apply the identity involving the product of two cosines. For example, we have cosine of ax times cosine of bx. San equal ang identity na ito? Or san equal ang expression na ito? So, this is equal to one half. Kopyahin mo lang to. Paltan mo lang yung minus, gawin mo lang siyang plus, di ba? So, 1 half times the cosine of a minus b times x plus cosine of a plus b times x. Okay. So, again, we will use these identities para ma-integrate ang mga functions na ito. So, it, they will appear to be difficult kung hindi mo alam yung identity. Pero once na alam mo na yung identity, mukha lang silang mahaba. Pero may pattern naman, kaya madali silang ma-memorize. Pag alam mo yung identity, sobrang dali lang mag-integrate. Promise. Okay? So, examples. First, sine of 7x cosine 3x. So, dito, meron tayong product ng sine at cosine. Ano nga yung gagamitin nating identity para dyan? Product ng sine at saka cosine. So, we will use sine ax times cosine bx. Saan nga equal yan? That's equal to 1 half times 
sine of, unahin natin yung plus, A plus B, times X, plus sine of, yun namang minus, A minus B times X. Okay? So, to integrate this, magiging ganito yung expression natin. Yung 1 half, ilalagay ko na sa labas kasi constant multiplier lang naman siya. Tapos, sine of, what is A plus B? Yung A natin 7, tapos yung B natin ay 3. So, that will be sine 10x. Okay, plus sine of A minus B naman. So, A minus B is 4. So, this will be sine of 4x. Ayan. So, now we are integrating two terms. Diba? Na pag integrate natin, ano makukuha ang sagot? Madali lang, no? Readily integrable na yan, eh. Integral of sine is negative cosine. So, this becomes negative 1 over 10 cosine of 10x plus integral of sine is still negative cosine. So, palitan ko na lang to ng minus. Minus 1 fourth times cosine 4x. Ito na siya ngayon. And then, plus C. Okay? Now, pwede natin ilabas pa yung common factor dito. Ang common factor niyan is 1 half para ito maging 1 fourth. Labas ko na rin yung negative sign. So, magiging negative 1 fourth times. Dito may matitirang 1 fifth. And then, cosine 10x plus 1 half cosine of 4x. Okay? Plus C. So, there you go. Nasolve na natin yung problem. Ganyan lang siya kadali. ba? So, again, kung hindi mo alam yung identity, magmumukhang mahirap yung pag-integrate. Pero once alam mo yung identity, madali lang siya. Kasi once na ma-apply mo ang identity, recta-integrate ka na. ba? Madali lang. Okay. So, what if uh, gawin natin yan parehas dalawang sine? ba? Sine 7x times sine cosine 3x. Ano mangyayari? O, di palitan mo lang yung identity. Ano gagamitin nating identity? Yung sine of ax times sine of bx equals 1 half. Remember, that's kung yan ay sine at sine, magiging cosine ito ngayon. And then, uunahin natin yung minus a minus b x and then dahil yan ay sine minus yung sine sa gitna cosine ulit this time yung sum naman ng a plus b okay so ito pag in natin ng identity na yan yung 1 half pwede ko nang ilabas tapos i-integrate ko ngayon yung nasa loob magiging cosine of dalawang terms yan cosine of a minus b so we have cosine 4x minus yun namang sum nila 10. So, cosine of 10x dx. So, once again, this is readily integrable. This gives us 1 half times integral of cosine is positive sine 1 fourth times sine 4x minus 1 over 10 times sine of 10x and then plus c. So, once again, pwede natin ilabas yung common factor pa dito na 1 half para ito maging 1 fourth. So, we will get 1 fourth times 1 half sine of 4x minus 1 fifth times the sine of 10x. And then, plus C. O, diba? Sobrang dali lang. Now, let us solve another problem. What if pareha silang cosine? Kung pareha silang cosine, ang gamitin mong identity is yung cosine of ax times cosine of bx. Saan nga equal yan? That's equal to 1 half times cosine of a minus bx plus, dahil cosine, cosine of a minus b, a plus na pala, times x. Ayan, ito yung i-apply natin ngayon. Now, itong 1 half na to, again, pwede mo na siyang ilabas times sa integral of cosine of yung difference. So, cosine of 4x. Tapos magiging plus lang yung nasa gitna. And then cosine of yung sum, 10x dx. Okay. So parang yung kanina lang yan, di ba? <laughs> parang yung kanina lang. Ang pinagkaiba lang, yung sine kanina sa gitna, minus. Di ba? At yung sine ngayon dito ay plus. Kaya pwede na natin kopyahin to. No? One fourth. <laughs> one fourth times one half sine 4x plus... 1 fifth sine 10x plus C. Okay. So, that's it. Ganun lang po kadali. 
So, remember, mahalaga na alam natin yung identity kasi kung hindi natin alam yung identity, hindi mo siya ma-integrate as it is. Naiintindihan po ba? So, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and share this to your friends who are also studying integral calculus. Thank you for watching. Bye!